I helped my father in his tree planting with even greater enthusiasm. So now she says that uh, this thought of the earth becoming a deserted place, okay, without trees, it frightened her so much that now she was even more enthusiastic about it, okay. Enthusiasm means excitement. She was much more excited to help her father in tree planting. One day the trees will move again, he said. They have been standing still for one uh, for thousands of years, but now, uh, but one day they will move again. There was a time when trees could walk about like people. Then along came a terrible demon and cast a spell over them, rooting them to one place. But they are, but they are always trying to move. See how they reach out their, with their arms. So here she says that her father said that one day the trees they will move again. Okay, that since they have been standing still for thousands of years. But uh, there was a time when these trees, they could mo walk, about, uh, walk about like people. But there was a terrible demon that casted a spell over these trees and rooted it to one place. But then we can see, you can see that these trees are still trying to move, trying to reach out their arms. Okay. On one of our walks along the riverbank, about a mile upstream from here, we found an island, a small rocky island in the middle of the riverbed. Okay, so now, as she and her father used, they used to go for walks, isn't it, quite often, to different places. So, on one such day, they found a small rocky island along the riverbed, okay. You know what, the, uh, what this riverbed is like, dry during summers, but flooded during the monsoons. Okay, so now this riverbed, it used to be, it used to remain dry during the summers and flooded during the monsoons. A young tamarind tree was growing in the middle of the island and my father said, if a tamarind can grow, so can other trees. Okay, so and then they found a small, a young tamarind tree was growing right in the middle of the island. Tamarind tree means imli kapir. Okay, so her father said that if a tamarind can grow here, then why not other plants? Okay, why not other plants and other trees? As soon as the monsoon arrived and while the river could still be crossed, we set out with a number of mango, laburnum, hibiscus and coral tree saplings and cuttings and spent the better part of a day planting them on the little island. Okay, so now as soon as the season of monsoon arrived, they went to the uh, riverbed, they went to the island, okay, with a number of mango, laburnum, hibiscus, coral tree saplings and cuttings, okay, and they spent their day uh, planting these on that little island. We made one more visit to the island before the monsoon finally set in. Most of the plants looked quite healthy. Okay, so before the monsoon ended, they gave one more visit to that island. Okay, and they could see that the plants which they had planted there, it looked quite healthy. The monsoon season is the best time of for rambling about. Rambling means to move about, okay, to roam about. At every turn, there is something new to see. So, the monsoon season, it's the best time, okay, to move around and to see new things. Out of the earth and rock and leafless bow, the magic touch of the summer rain brings forth new life and wonder. Okay, so now the summer rain, it brings new life and wonder. Wonder means greenery to the surrounding, okay. You can almost see the broad-leaved vines growing. Plants spring up in the most unlikely of places. Okay, so during the summer rain, what happens? There are lots of plants that are growing in the most unexpected places. All right, a people took root on the roof, a mango sprouted on the windowsill. Okay, now, so like as it is said here, that during the summer rain, the most plants they start growing in the most unexpected, unlikely places. So that's why they could see a people that took root. That means a people had spread its roots on the roof of their house maybe. And then a mango, it sprouted on the windowsill. That means under the window, there is a area, okay? the A shelf-like bottom at the, at the bottom of the window. Uh, my father and I did not want to remove them, but they had to go if the house was to be prevented from falling down. Okay, so although she and her father, they didn't want to remove these small plants that were growing there, isn't it? But then uh, they had to be removed in order to keep their house protected. Because if there is a huge people tree, the root 
if it takes place on the roof of a house what will happen obviously the roof is not so strong to hold the weight of a people tree isn't it it will fall down it will fall off if you do want to live in a tree that's all right by me said my mother but i like having a roof over my head and i'm not going to have it brought down by a handing forest already i can see roots breaking in through the ceiling okay so her mother said that if you want to if you do want to live if you do want to live in a tree that's okay i have no problem but i want to i would prefer having a roof over my head okay and i can already see the roots are breaking in through the ceiling of our house the visiting trees were carefully removed and transplanted in the garden so they removed the trees okay from their roof and it was planted in the garden instead wherever wherever we came indoors from our gardening and sat down to a meal a ladybird or a caterpillar would invari- would invariably walk off our sleeves and wander about the kitchen much to mother's annoyance okay so now because of these lots of plants and trees growing around what happened the uh, the whenever they uh, whenever these people they used to take their meal okay whenever they sat down to have their meal a ladybird or a caterpillar okay so these are all insects isn't it it would variably walk off Va- invariably means any time okay every time it would come over enter their house okay and walk off our sleeves and wander about in the kitchen so the mother used to be annoyed looking at these There were flowers in the garden too. My mother loved fragrant flowers like roses and sweet peas and jasmine and queen of the night. So there were even flowers in the garden, okay, which her mother they she loved. So, okay, and but my father and I found trees more exciting. They kept growing and changing and, tra- and attracting birds and other visitors, okay. So all her mother, she mostly she loved the flowers, okay, the fragrant flowers of a garden. but whereas the grandmother and her father they were very much fond and excited about the trees all right the banyan tree really came to life during the monsoon the branches were thick with scarlet figs so the banyan tree it seemed as if it really came to life during the monsoon season okay the branches they were full of scarlet figs scarlet figs are a kind of um, insect We couldn't eat the berries but the many birds that gathered in the tree gossipy gossipy rosy pastors so it's a name of a bird okay rosy pastors quarrelsome miners cheerful bulbuls and coppersmiths and sometimes a noise bullying crow would feast on them okay now so the branches it, they were full of the scarlet figs isn't it isn't it so that's why and that's why they could not eat the berries of the banyan of the tree why because there were many birds that used to gather in the tree and the names of the birds are mentioned here so these uh, these birds would feast on these berries and when night fell and the birds were resting the dark flying foxes flapped heavy heavily about the tree chewing and munching loudly as they clambered over the branches okay and uh, and as it got uh, it got darker and as the night fell the birds and the other birds they were resting the dark flying foxes flapped what is dark flying foxes it's one species of the bats okay so it flapped heavily about the tree so at night the black uh, dark flying foxes they flapped heavily uh, about the tree and they used to chew and munch loudly as they clambered over the branches clambered means uh, to move trying to climb or to move with difficulty You must have seen bats how they try to move over the tree isn't it The tree crickets were a band of willing artists who would start singing at almost any time of the day At the height of the monsoon the banyan tree was like an orchestra with the musicians constantly tuning up Okay so now the tree crickets now this is an insect again all right so the tree, tree crickets were like a band okay were like a band of artists they 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 because they make a kind of sound together okay it used to it used to seem and they used to make the sound at any time of the day and it used to, and it used to seem as if there's an orchestra orchestra is what a group a large group of musicians okay who play variety of different instruments together so it used to seem like an orchestra with musicians constantly tuning up a small flute in my hand 
I would add, my shrill piping to that of the crickets and cicadas, but they must have thought poorly of my piping, because whenever I played, the insects fell silent. Okay, so as these insects, they used to make the sound. So even the grandmother, she used to hold, she used to take her, take her small flute and she used to, she used to start playing along with them. But what happened? As soon as she started playing her uh, uh, flute, what happened? What used to happen? All the rest of the crickets and insects, they fell silent. And she's saying that maybe they didn't like, they thought my, my flute, the sound of my flute was very much poor. Okay, the way I played, it was very poor. When I grew up, I was married and went to live with, with your grandfather in Bombay. We were there for many years and I could only visit my parents here once or twice and all the time. Okay, so when she grew up, she was married, okay, to her grandfather. That means the girl's grandfather and she went to Bombay. And we were there for many years. She says that they lived there for many years and she could hardly visit her parents once or twice. I had no brothers, so when my parents died, they left the house to me. It will be yours one day. Would you rather live here or in a heat? pokey little house in the town so since she was the only daughter so after her par parents died so the house it became hers okay and then she says that would you uh, prefer living here or in a heat in a heat pokey little house heated it should be heated pokey little house it means a house like it's given there in your book as well a tiny a cramped or chaotic house all right here said Koki, but only if you are here too, Granny. So Koki says that, obviously I would like to he live here, but then only in one condition, that if only you will be here with me along. The trees will be here, said Granny. And what about the island? asked Koki. The trees you planted with your father, are they still here? Uh, you can see them for yourself if you like, if you feel like a walk. But I'll tell you what I found when I came to live here again after 20 years or more. I walked out of the old house and took the same path that my father and I used to take during our walks. Okay, so now Koki, she is asking her grandmother about the island, whether it is still there or not. So she says that, why don't you go and have a look for yourself, alright? But I'll tell you that I found uh, what I found when I came to live here again, okay, after 20 years, after spending 20 years outside so i walked out of the old house and i took the same path that my father had taken it was february i, I remember and as i looked across the dry riverbed my eye was immediately caught by the spectacular red plumes of the coral blossom in contrast to the dry riverbed the island was a small green paradise when i walked walked over to the trees i noticed that a number of parrots had come to live in them so okay a small spotted deer scampered away to hide in a thicket and a wild pheasant challenged me with a mellow who are you who are you okay so she says that the grandmother she's saying that when after 20 years i came back to this place and i went to that island i saw something strange okay i saw a different side that was and it was during the month of february so as she walked upon and she reached the dry riverbed she could see that uh, there was a spectacular red plumes of the coral blossom okay it's a tree with these kind of flowers and in contrast to the dry riverbed the riverbeds were dry but the island was green okay it was green like a small paradise and as she walked into the trees, she could notice there were, a, there were a number of parrots, okay, who started living in that island. And then she could even spot a deer that scampered away. Scampered means to move lightly, swiftly. And it was hiding. Okay, and there was a wild pheasant. Pheasant is again a name of a bird, okay. And, uh, the, and it seemed as if the pheasant, the bird was challenging her, was asking her, who are you? Who are you? That Why are you here? Who are you? All right. But the dreams seemed to know me. I'm sure they whispered among themselves and beckoned me nearer. Okay. So although everything was different, there were new plant, uh, new birds, new animals in that forest, in that island. Okay. 
but then the trees it seemed as if they recognized me they remem remembered me all right i'm sure they whispered among themselves and beckoned me nearer beckoned means to trying to draw someone closer i ran my hands over the box and it was like touching the hands of old friends okay so as she was running her hands over the box and things okay what happened it felt as if she was touching the hands of an old friend and looking around i noticed that other small trees and wild plants and grasses had sprung up under the protection of these that we had planted here okay so as she looked around she could notice that there were other small trees and wild plants and grasses that had sprung up okay under the protection of these plants which they had they had planted there the trees had multiplied the forest the forest was on the move in one small corner of the world my father's dream was coming true and trees were walking again okay so with this she says that the trees had multiplied obviously there was one tree two three and slowly it started increasing okay isn't it like the trees they have their fruits flowers so as the fruit and flowers it falls off on the ground the seeds it happens to again change into another a, a one more plant a newer plant isn't it so that way there were more plants and trees increasing they were mu multiplying all right so with, and with this in one small corner of the world her father's dream that trees will walk again had come true so now out here it's it means that the trees do not do not actually just walk on foot but it means uh as there were new plants growing so what was happening the trees were kind of moving isn't it that means one tree so the trees were moving so that means there were trees growing from one area to another they were they were increasing so in that way the uh, the author has meant that the trees will walk again that mean which means that the trees will grow as they grow it seems as if the trees are walking okay so this way her father's dream was also coming true okay so with this we've come to the end of this chapter okay we'll sum up here and i hope you have understood the story of this chapter and as you can see i have underlined these words all right this you'll be doing for your spellings and here i have sent you the word meanings all right you have the word meanings from the book there are a few words from the book and i have also added few more okay it's from the chapter itself so children you'll be doing the spellings and word meanings in your english reader exercise book all right and as this is a new chapter please write the date on top write the chapter's number and name correctly and then write this much for today and we'll continue in our next class